enable the microphone. Hello everyone to this demo of the Hercula Alpha 6 um, release that we released yesterday. Um, as in the previous demos, I want to show you or we want to show you what we have been working on in the last four weeks. Um, also, as we are working in an agile way, um, there may be features in there that have been started where you can already see them and then try them, but um, which are not yet completely done. Um, if you want to use the QA, there is a QA plugin where you can ask question and I can hopefully answer them when I, when I see that. Um, and it would also be good um, if you could join us later on, let's say, IRC or other means where um, so no, I'm not showcasing that. Um, no, that's not the right plugin, the showcase one. Um, anyway, so you could join us on IRC on um, freenode.net in Power and Hocula, or, or also on the mailing lists on the website hocula.org. And um, just ask us the questions there. We have the, the blogs with the release blogs and so on. So when you go to Um, let me see that. This doesn't find it. Okay, the plugin doesn't work as I wanted. Anyway, let's um, start to get live. I wanna, we will share my screen and um, lead you through the changes. So this is the usual login screen. You know that from the past. And um, I have already registered as a user. So I'm logging in. And the first thing you probably notice is this new alert sender um, button in the top left corner in the top bar. I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes. But first, let me go to the application servers. I've started this one, this instance already um, a while ago. And what you can see here is that the charts now have horizontal lines that make it easier to understand or to see what a value is. Um, it's also possible, as you see here, the orange and the black line from the committed and maximum, they are very similar to just disable one of those by clicking on the um, maximum icon or maximum square at the bottom, um, similar for the other ones. And you see now it's resized as we don't have the low values from the use chart. So it's easier even to see um, the heap usage. So now let me just add some um, alert here. Threshold condition when the usage is larger than 40%. For the heap or less than 100 megabyte, let's say 300 megabyte, then alert me, but only if this is met for two minutes in a row. That looks fine. So let me save that. And um, this should pretty quickly trigger now an alert that we should see here. I'm not um, going to wait for that, but instead I will go to the alert sender which is now the central place in the UI where you can go and um, see alerts that have recently happened and also visit alert definitions like this one. So you see um, here we have three individual de definitions listed that all came out of the other definition. Let me just show you this one again. The alert settings, we had one definition for usage greater than, another one for usage less than. And um, there is one hidden for the garbage collection in this sub tab. And these are those three that you see on the definitions tab here. In the future, you will be able to click on the view details button 
and um, <clears throat> also see more details like what notifications have been configured and so on. Similar, it will be possible to change the state, disable a definition or enable. Well, actually, let me try that. It even works now already, so that's pretty cool. And hopefully our alert has fired. No, hasn't yet. Just probably the two minute wait time is not yet over. So um, that's not a big deal because I have more to show. Let me go back to my application server and into the data sources tab. And um, there are some additions here. So there is this add data source button and also these little action drop downs on the individual data source. And um, we have showcased the add driver last time and I have already prepared that for a Postgres driver. So let's add a data source. First is you decide if it's a XA or non XA data source. I'm gonna use a non XA one, give it a name. My demo there is the GNDI name is already um, <coughs> derived from that. I will select the driver that is already in the system. Um, at the moment, you still need to provide the data source class. This will in the future be derived from the uploaded driver and, and auto filled. Um, but, and then the connection URL is something we can't know in advance. So this is something you have to provide. So let me go for the data source class or postgresql.driver and the connection URL, jdbc column post postgres at localhost colon 5432 colon test. So that's the connection URL. Um, if it's an XA data source, you can add properties here. Um, we will skip that step in the future if it's not um, an XA data source, most probably add, uh, skip that. And then the last step, it wants the connection settings. So for the, the default is the username that you have provided to logged in into um, Hocula, but um, actually it's may, maybe my um, browser filling it in. Um, and once you have that, you have the verification screen and you can edit. And this is the demo effect with the socket. So let me quickly refresh the browser window and just do that again. Okay, that's the connection URL, no properties, username. Next. And you see this time it was forwarded to the, to the agent and to the server and to the agent. And now this demo DS has been created successfully. So we can exit the dialogue and uh, when I wait for a little while or refresh the page, you see that my demo DS has shown up here and is ready to be used. Okay, now let's go back to the alert sender. Time is over. And indeed we have a, a heap used um, alert fired. So let's have a look at it. This is of severium, severity medium um, created on well, three minutes ago on this resource pass, which we also make a little more human readable and an email notification to jdo at acme.org has been sent. Now um, you have the possibility to transition the alert through various states, but it's also possible to just add a comment.
This is useful when you add that command that if someone else is working on the alert later, that he already has a, an, so you can provide an idea even if you can't really work on it. And then when you just say, okay, uh, I want to acknowledge it. I start working, so it's in acknowledged state. And when you go to the alerts then the main screen, you see now here that this is an acknowledged state and that it has comments on it. So you can just view details and you see the comments. And then when you have fixed the issue, you can either go into the details screen again or just uh, change the state to resolved. And then um, this page is empty again. But if you want to look at past resolved alerts, um, you can click here on this button and it will show the, the old ones. So we have the, still the definitions here. And um, so that's the alert sender. We will certainly improve that, as I already said, with the with details and formatting. But this is pretty cool that we have this central place now to go to and see all the alerts in, in one place, especially as they can be hidden in in the detailed screens where they will <coughs> where they are um, originally created. We will also add the possibility to add new definitions from this screen um, if you know what you're looking for and um, in the future also to, to group them so to define them on multiple um, resources at once. So that's the alert sender. Another thing that we have um, added here is when you go to this user drop down menu on the right. Um, so, Hercula in its core is a multi tenant system, which means you can have multiple organizations or tenants that um, can have their own set of resources, of monitored resources and um, they um, so they they can then only see their resources this is probably good if you have um, sub several departments where each department is taking care of their own installation of machines, but you still only want to have a central Hercula server and not multiple. Um, so what you can do here is go to manage organizations. You create a new organization, Hercula.org. And then you can create another organization, Acme.org. And when you go into Hercula.org, you also see that Joe Doe is a member of the organization um, because he's um, he's the creator of it. Similar for Acme.org, where he's also um, the owner of it. And now you can go and invite people. At the moment, that's done via email. So it's um, Roadrunner should be invited. And you see now here in the list, the Roadrunner at Acme, and he has the invited um, flag. In the future, we will also make it possible to just pick from system users that are already registered in the system to invite them into your organization. Um, as I said, this is um, just starting. And then when you have the organizations and defined, you can also imperson impersonate um, as a certain organization. This is a little bit like um, with GitHub, where you can be part of several organizations like for hockeylad.org and rhqproject.org, or in the Google Plus uh, company pages, where you uh, could also be part of such a company page. And then when you go into the application li server list, this is now spinning because there is nothing to show right now. And uh, this is because the resource that we have belongs to the JDO user, and we have not yet uh, encoded the logic to also make it available to the whole organization. So that's on the plate for the for the future. Well, actually, here it is, even better. But uh, we will certainly have more, much more fine-grained um, control over what's what's being done and uh, what's what's shown. 
so well another um case for the demo gods so let me just be John Jodo again and um so that's that's it for the moment the alert sender we have another alert created actually two that's that's fine now um i don't see well let me check that qa plugin i don't see yes there is anyone um Not sure if I should have enabled that earlier, but um, anyway, it's the the Q and A plugin is enabled right now, so you can ask me a question. Otherwise, I'm gonna switch to um, a terminal. And um, in the past, it was we so we have this separate download for the Hocular agent which is basically the piece that is running or it's called wildfly monitor actually this is a piece of software that's running inside of the wildfly server and then talking to the hocular server and the hocular server always has this wildfly monitor agent built in and uh, to add for more agents uh, out in the field was always a bit um, more complicated so we have done two things and one thing is the agent installer. That's a standalone jar file that um, when you look at the block, the release block that we have done, um, you could just run it like this, Java minus jar, yada, 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 to provide all the, um, the binaries, the binary, the module location. So where is the agent? Um, where is my Wildfly located? Where is my Hocular server located? and probably a few other properties um, but still doing that by hand and uh, one after the other is um, still uh, well heavy duty so what i've been playing with is um, ansible and um, you may have heard that red hat and ansible are now um, working together to say it easily and what I've done is created um, a playbook install agent where it's basically fetching a wildfly if not yet done from the wildfly repo. It will fetch the agent, distribute wildfly to the remote machines, distribute the agent binary to the remote machines, distribute the installer, configure the agent and start wildfly. And let's try that now. So Ansible playbook. Mm command is Ansible playbook and then just get past this install agent file and this is then running first it's gathering facts so learning about the, the systems involved the fetch wildfly task is getting that from remote but I have already a local copy so I'm fine here and it's then distributing it distribute wildfly to the involved machines also the agent the agent installer. Um, the UI looks a bit confusing right now as um, I'm always running two install jobs or two tasks in parallel here just to speed it up a little bit because uh, this machine Pi here, um, this one is only a, um, an old Raspberry Pi that's, that's not so fast. And um, if we would always wait on it, it would probably extend our session here. And you see here in the background, there is already one new agent that has just connected. And there should more be coming. Here, the start command for, for those machines, this was a special sp 
I have a special um, task for this one with a different port binding. And then the old Pi only has soft float um, uh, JVM av available that does not understand the server flag. So it gets a little different treatment. And um, the other machines just get um, the normal Wildfly 10.00 CR3 server. And actually, while this is so, we are happy here. This has executed nine steps, eight steps, nine steps. Nothing has failed, so we are lucky. Let's have a look here. Refresh the page. We have three already connecting. So this one on snort.local is my, my Hocular server. And the other ones are two of the deployed um, Wildfly servers that got deployed via Ansible. And um, yeah, you see the next one's popping up. And the last on host Pi should also show up soon. So let's have a quick look at um, what the Ansible thingy is actually doing. And um, I have a, I have all these various artifacts locally here. So this is agent installer or Hogular Wildfly installer in different versions. I have um, the monitor module. So this is the agent itself. I do have a few wildflies that I have already downloaded before. Um, and then I have these top level playbooks to install the agent or to stop the servers. And all them depend on variables defined in group vars. So um, like this, so which wildfly version to use, which agent version, um, what installer are we using, where is the server and, and so on. And then within the roles directory, you have these various roles, which are the individual sort of subtasks that can be mixed and matched. And if you look at configure agent, this is then running the installer that I've shown on the, the website, basically just, which is, it was co copied to temp and then just Java minus jar, installer jar minus module. So location where this was brought on the remote host with the location of the Wildfly home, all coming from the, um, driven by these variables, and then Hocular server URL also coming from the variable. And um, now that I'm here, you see now I have five application servers, and this brings me to a little Easter egg that we have in the UI. Um, we have a new, nice new topology screen and this topology screen is now showing the servers, so these black ones, with applications deployed and connected data sources. So here you see my demo DS, uh, the Keycloak one, Hocular server one, and here these na naked, uh, between quotes, Wildfly servers just have one example DS connected. In the future, we will make that a bit more interactive and also show links between um, things where well, it's already interactive, but links between things. So you can say, okay, this one and this one, they are the same data source in the back end. So they talk to the same um, database. And uh, so we know that this is forming an app application together. Um, we will try to all the discovery applications, of course, but um, sometimes you may need some help here. And then you could say all these three wildflies with this database, they form an application. You can, as you see here, also just disable them for redisplay. And what's also pretty nice is when you go on one of these, um, or the Hocular DS, when you double click, you directly uh, land in the right place. And um, look what we also have now. We have a platform tab over here. And if you go to it, you see um, from the platform that this Wildfly is running on some statistics like memory usage or the CPU usage. So this first graph here 
shows CPU usage um, added up from all the individual four processors that I have in the machine. This may change a little bit in the future, the display of it. Um, so these are my four CPUs. I've chosen the RHQ bars here because they nicely show minimum and maximum. Um, here it's an area chart where you see at least minimum, maximum thingies. Um, I would like to see our normal, well, not normal charts, but the line charts to um, also provide lines. Well, this is not showing data, not sure why. Um, here you see this is the, the standard line chart, but this is always only the sh showing the average um, of the matrix, but not the minimum, maximum. It's probably not a big deal with the file system, but with the CPU, you probably want to see more than always the same value, especially when you are zooming out for um, last 12 hour display where you here see really the band of CPU use or of memory usage, or can see here that uh, also the CPU usage is, is varying. Okay, so that's it. Any more questions? If there are no more questions, I will stop here. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And um, visit us on hockeylaw.org and um, also on IRC. And um, actually, where is that? Community home here, mailing lists, IRC. Um, Google Plus, Twitter are the communication cha channels. You find that from the Hocula website, so www.hocula.org or only hocula.org. Thank you. <laughs>